Hampshire. <laughs> I want to begin by introducing to you the next senator from the state of Missouri, Roy Blunt. You've heard of the Peter Principle, right? Yeah. Rising to the level of your own incompetence. That is the story of Robin Carnahan's political career. And she rose to the level of her own incompetence when she was named Secretary of State and they don't do anything. <laughs> to be United States Senator is a promotion way above her level of competence. In fact, she is to Senator as Obama is to President. When they propose another stimulus package in Washington to try to bleed us to help the economy, Roy Blunt is going to vote no. And Robin Carnahan will do what they tell her. And when the bill comes up to repeal Obamacare, and block the $500 billion of Medicare cuts, Roy Blunt is going to vote to repeal it. Yes. Yeah. And when California and New York and Michigan line up outside the Capitol like Greece is outside of the IMF, begging for a bailout, begging for a debt guarantee, Roy Blunt is going to say no. Now, by the rules of the Tea Party, Roy here can't say anything, but I think you know what he'd say if he were here and able to talk. We're going to take the House and we're going to take the Senate. We're not going to win the 39 seats we need to win the House. We're not going to win 40. We're not going to win 50. We're not going to win 60. We're going to win 60 to 80 seats in the House of a safe district, but can't find one this side of Havana and Caracas, goodbye! And most of all, best of all, Harry Reid, see you later! Let me just take a minute to explain why we have no economic recovery. It's because Barack Obama says, have a nice recovery, go ahead. Now next year I'm gonna raise your taxes like crazy and your health insurance premiums and with cap and tax your utility bill, but spend all your money now, don't worry about tomorrow. And then he says, have a nice recovery but if you're 75 or 80 or 85 years old and you're a little worried about departing this planet, don't invest your money back in your company because I'm gonna come back with the inheritance tax and take half of it. And if you're thinking of starting jobs in the healthcare industry, don't you dare do it because I'm gonna make everything illegal and take it all over. And if you're a bank, don't make any loans to create jobs because if they go bad 
I'm going to take you over, fire you, fire your board, sell off the stock, and sell off divisions of your company, and wipe out your equity shareholders, okay? So don't make any loans to create jobs. And if you're in the manufacturing sector, for God's sakes, don't create any more jobs, because I'm coming in with tram cap and tax, and I'm going to ship them overseas. And if you're in the energy sector, I'm going to impose a tax on carbon and a tax on oil, so don't you create any new jobs. But other than that, have a nice recovery, folks. The fact of the matter is that Barack Obama uses the recession as an excuse for socialism. Barack Obama uses the uninsured as an excuse to take over the medical industry. Barack Obama uses the prospect of climate change to take over the manufacturing and the energy sector. You know, the Democrats are running ads in a couple of the districts accusing folks like Roy Blunt of wanting to ship jobs overseas. That's after they passed the GM bailout where two-thirds of the jobs are overseas. And the cash for clunkers program when half the cars were foreign made. And the TARP program where the bank lending went overseas. That takes some nerve. But my message for this Tea Party movement is that you are saving the United States of America. saving us by purifying the Republican Party. Let's remember that when they lost power in 06, out of 200 Republican congressmen, 10 were under indictment, resigned, or were convicted. Washington is an unsafe city, but the House of Representatives was the highest crime neighborhood. But you're purifying that. You're throwing them out and replacing them with grassroots activists with true conservative principles, and bless you for that. And you are sweeping that reformed, rededicated, reconstituted Republican Party back into power. But your job won't end on November 2nd. It will start on November 2nd. Because I like all these candidates. I think they're all great. But you know, I hope they drink bottled water. Because there's something in that water supply in Washington, D.C. that leads them to think taxes might not be so bad after all. And that entitlement spending should not be curbed and that government spending can't be rolled back. And the force that will keep them honest, the force that will keep this agenda pure, the force that will bring it to fruition is you. Now when those states come to Washington and beg for financial relief, you know what the Republicans should say? They should say, get rid of your union contract. Go into bankruptcy and do what Delta Airlines did and Chrysler did. Abrogate those contracts and then solve your own problems. And when Barack Obama comes to Congress and says, I'm moving to the center, I'm going to rein back spending and have some increases in taxes, the Republican Party needs to say, hell no! Not one dime of new taxes. You roll back your spending to the level of taxes. We're not going to ratify your socialism.
So we need you to purify this party. We need you to animate it and drive it to victory. And then we need you more than ever after election day to keep them in line. Thank you and bless you. It's here again for Dick Moore.